Well, it's that time of year that I get pretty excited about, and that is where we start to see the previews of all of the ski gear that's due to be released for the 2024 winter season. Now, something as far as ski boots is concerned that has been a real standout is that we're starting to see a brand new closure system that some boots are incorporating into their lower shells. Now, this is with a pretty substantial BOA cable system. Now, I've been actually super lucky and I've been able to get my hands on one so we can actually run through, take a closer look at this, and I also want to get your thoughts on what you think about this brand new innovation that we're seeing in ski boots. Just to talk a little bit more about what this is, is essentially it is a BOA system that's been designed specifically for closing the lower shell of a boot. Now you may have seen BOA laces built into ski touring boots, or you'll see them commonly on snowboard boots, or even just at the liner of some ski boots. But now we're looking at a setup that is a much heavier gauge. It's much more burly, and so you can get quite a bit more tension on it. And it's been designed to actually replace the buckles and enclose and wrap the lower shell differently to what you can get with traditional buckles. From what I've seen so far, it is being built into several different boot models. Now K2 are utilizing it in their Recon and Anthem series. Also, they've built it into their Mindbender boots. Also, we are seeing with Salomon, they have one built into a model of their S-Pro series. Atomic have incorporated it into some of their Hawk series of boots. And also, we're seeing it included in a race boot with Fisher building it into their latest RC4 boot. So everything that I've been reading about this so far and the whole concept behind it is essentially to provide a different closure to the overlap to where it comes across the other side in a more even manner. So the idea behind this is it just opens up and facilitates a lot more people to fit into a boot to where traditionally they were having some instep issues and where downward pressure would be cutting off blood flow. So I really like the concept of changing this up and providing a different solution. Now, if we were to look at the BOA lace itself, it is quite a heavy gauge. Also, it's really prominent with this spinner. Um, you can see the size of it, it's quite chunky, um, but it also feels just quite robust when you're initiating the spin and the tightening of the cable. So it's pretty prominent, it actually stands out a fair way on the boot. And what's also interesting when tightening it is just how much tension you can get as you crank this the whole way forward. Now what's really interesting is versus buckles, I guess you can see the mounting point where this cable runs through is actually in a similar position to where the buckle ladders would have been traditionally fixed. So they haven't really changed the mold of the boot as far as where these screw holes were and where those ladders would have been located. But now that cable just runs to that and they've included these other two mounting points along the other side to really bring this all across in one motion. You're not tightening here and there at separate times. It's all increasing tension as you go. Now it works much the same as a lot of other bowers where to engage the cable, you're clicking it down and then you're spinning it. Now just one thing to note here, this only spins in one direction, where you find on a lot of snowboard boot bowers, you're clicking in and you're spinning clockwise to tighten, and then to release, you just click it out and it all releases at once. Um, but this bower system, it doesn't operate clockwise, it probably does on the right boot. I only have a left here to show you, but the idea, I guess, is to get that tightening in moving the wheel in the forward direction. Now, with anything new like this, all of this looks great in concept, but as I start looking at it and start thinking about it, a lot of questions come to mind as far as the usability factor and the practicality of actually engaging this out on the mountain. So some things that I start to think about, number one is just buckle tension. And a lot of people that have buckles on their lower shell, they find a place and they have them set to a point. Now, because you have micro adjustment on your buckles, what you can do is find that really sweet spot 
so you have your buckles set to exactly where you like them and then at the top of the mountain you simply click them in and then you're going and you're skiing now that is something that you're not going to have the joy of being able to do with this new cable system now what you do have is basically you are going to have to do this by feel every single time you're doing up your boot now if I can show you on the front here, there is a couple of lines that you could use as a gauge for the tension. So this is where you may find, okay, well I like this boot being done up to this point on the line. So every time I'm gonna do my boots up, that's where I'm gonna crank this cable until it meets that point. Now, if you're not on that line, I personally would be probably using a Sharpie or getting a Dremel and making a groove. So it just makes it a little bit quicker. Because if you think about when you get to a lift or say you're riding a T-bar or, you know, something like this, a lot of the time you want to release the tension in your boots. You want that blood flow to come back through your feet. And where this cable system is just quick and easy, you snap it out, it all releases, you're laughing, but you get to the top of a lift on a power day and all your friends take off and you're sitting at the top and you're cranking your boots trying to do it quickly to get skiing and you go too far, well then you've got to release it again and then you've got to start again and you've got to crank your boots till you get to the spot. So I know that's just a minor sort of thing to pick apart right away, but that's the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this. And the other thing to think about, and what I saw quite a few comments on so far on the internet, was the durability of this. Now, it looks to be pretty solid. I don't think any skis cutting onto the cable are gonna make it snap. I think it's probably gonna definitely withstand that. But the chunkiness of the spinner, like can this take impacts and still be okay? Now, from what I read from some of the guys that work for the boot companies, the, the designers actually said that this is designed to take hits. Now, what I'm thinking about there is like, okay, number one, rail skiing, where you unintentionally are skiing into things and you might hit a vertical part of the rail um, and where that may take a real big shot. Now, the other thing you could think about is also maybe skiing trees. You may inadvertently hit a tree or in lift lines when you're smacking into other people's gear. Things happen, so you want something that's going to be able to withstand that. Now, what I did read is that this cap is actually designed to where if it takes a big enough impact, it will pop off completely and be able to be clicked back into place. Now, there's one downside to that, which I'm not sure has been thought of. I'm sure it has been. And this is where I think you're going to need replacement parts. Like, say you're skiing on a power day and you're in boot deep power and you're skiing through, you hit a log, it knocks the cap off. Well, there is about zero chance that you're going to be digging through and be able to find this part again. That thing's going to be gone forever. So the ability to get spare parts is going to be something that's going to have to be thought about. You'd want to get one pretty easily, otherwise it can seriously ruin your day. And you might even be out for weeks unless you can get a replacement boa. So that is something that really should be thought about um, in that situation. Now, as far as durability of the inside itself, it's also supposed to be fully metal built in on the inside of the cable system. So as far as cranking it, it's gonna handle as many turns as you could possibly do. It's pretty solid for that fact. Now, the other thing I like about this spinner actually is it does have a good amount of grippiness to it. It's like a rubber coating on the outer of it, which is gonna be perfect for when you've got gloves on and you're doing them up. But one thing, we have to just see how that goes long term as well, as far as that getting worn down from either use or from either rubbing up against things, you may lose some of that rubber coating to the outside of it. And lastly, it begs the question of just how effective is it? Now, as far as this recon boot is concerned, when I step in it and close it up, I can't say that it's the most revolutionary feeling as far as the boot being closed. Now, I still actually got quite a bit of impact on me in step when doing this boot up tight. So it doesn't completely eliminate it. It doesn't wrap this boot 100% in a new way where it feels 100% different. So it's not the 100% revolution that I was hoping for, um, but it does feel different as you're tightening them up. So this can be a good thing, and this is just my particular experience in this recon compared to a buckle recon. 
Now, I actually like this boot, so this is one that I'll even go and ski in, so I wanna give it a decent chance on mountain. But it's still early, like this is the first iteration we're seeing of this. So although it's gonna be perfect for a lot of people, for others, it's not gonna completely change the game in how the boot fits. So just keep that in mind. Um, but one thing that I think there is a lot of potential. Now, as I was saying before, these points where the cable is fed through is actually a similar position to where the buckle ladders were. Now what I'm really interested, and I'd love to know how much they experimented with changing up the position of how they thread through these cables to really affect how it does change how the boot closes. Now I'd love to see some experimentation and just how you can actually change where this cable actually wraps the lower shell. I think there's a lot of potential in maybe, you know, having several stages of different closure, maybe having this overlap at a different point, maybe having these mounting points in three or maybe in multiple areas, which will actually wrap it in a completely different way. Maybe bring it over the instep in a different position so it doesn't bring the tension downwards. I think there's so much potential to play around with this and I really hope they do experiment with a, a lot more because um, it's super interesting. I love to see it, it's very innovative. They obviously worked with BOA or they worked together between the boot brands to bring something completely new and that's only a good thing as far as going forward with ski boot design. So that is basically my full overview of these new BOA ski boots. Now there's definitely some pluses with this new system and possibly also a couple of things to still be skeptical of, but I really look forward to getting these onto people's feet next year and see how they go with fitting them. Uh, also can't wait to get out and ski in them and really give them a good run. Um, but yeah, I really can't wait to hear your thoughts about this. Is there anything that I haven't thought of? Um, what you think about this? Are you going to maybe try one of these boots next year? Or are you just going to see if anything develops with this going forward? So thanks heaps for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay rad.